So let's go to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. Now, you have to understand that when you are growing and maneuvering in the prophetic, the prophetic is something that you should sustain. You have to be intentional about growing and maintaining and nurturing your prophetic gift. Now, what I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to teach you how to nurture the prophetic gift, and then we're going to activate you in the prophetic. But your job between activation, right, and, and the next time you come to church is to practice what I'm going to disclose with you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And what I'm telling you is not for a season. It is for your life. Somebody says it's for my life. That means I'm not just going to do this one time. I'm, I'm going to learn a new lifestyle, and it's a prophetic lifestyle. Now, I'm in the vein of our series that we're in, Tables and Chairs. So I'm going to stay in that vein, and I'm going to debunk this scripture here. Let's go to 2 Kings. Kings, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 8. And I'll be reading from the Amplified Version to amplify this word. The Bible says, now there came a day when Elisha went over to Shunem, where there was a prominent and influential woman, and she persuaded him to eat a meal. Afterward, wherever he passed by, he stopped there for a meal. Verse 9, she said to her husband, behold, I sense that there is a holy man of God who frequently passed is our way. Please let us make a small fully walled upper room on the housetop and put a bed there for him. Somebody say a table. Somebody say a chair and a lampstand. Then whenever he comes to visit, he can turn in there. Now, I'm going to stop reading because I don't have a lot of time to read, but I want you uh, to know my subject for just a few minutes is make room Tell your neighbor, make room. That's the word, make room, make room. Now, when we understand the assignment of Elisha, Elisha was a prophet of the Lord. He, he, he was a protege of Elijah. Elisha's number one request when Elijah was when Elijah was being taken up is give me a double portion of your anointing. And by way of double portion of anointing, that means I can walk in double of what you have walked in. Elijah said that is a hard thing for me, but it's not a complicated thing for God. God. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Elijah said, that's a hard thing for me, but how many of you know just because it's hard for man doesn't mean it's difficult for God? <laughs> Elijah said, that's a hard thing for me, but he said, if you see me while I'm taking up, then I will give you what you're asking for, which means there are things that you can learn by simply observing. Many of you have observed prophetic ministry. Matter of fact, and, and Paul said it like this. He said, prophesy one by one that all may learn. That means when I'm in an atmosphere where prophecy is going on, if I'm paying attention, then I can learn from the person that's prophesying. Not only can I learn from the good things they do, do, but I also can learn from the crazy stuff that go on in prophetic ministry. Tell your neighbor, I'm a lifelong learner. Yes, I can learn. I don't have to do what they did to learn. I can learn from their crazy mistakes and learn. This is not appropriate for prophetic ministry. So he said, if you see me while I'm taking up, I will give you a double portion of, your, of this anointing of grace. And God gave him a double portion. Now, we understand that Elisha performed double miracles. Elijah performed 16. Elisha performed 32. He performed 32 while he was alive, 30, 31 while he was alive, one when he was dead that fulfilled the prophetic word. And the Bible says this particular scripture we get here, Elijah is passing through a, a city. As he's passing through this city, the Bible says there was a prominent woman. And many of you are like that woman in this situation. You're prominent, you have influence, but you're lacking one thing. How many of you uh, can attest to the fact, God, my business is growing. God, I'm doing what you told me to do. God, I'm here. But God, you're silent. God, I'm building. God, I'm here. God, I'm in covenant. She's married. God, I'm in covenant. But still, I'm not producing. I'm not fully in my mantle that you've called me to. But I'm so glad that, that this woman was wise enough by power of observation to learn if I just open up a prophetic channel and I invite the prophetic in, then what I'm doing, God will bless. Tell your neighbor, you got to learn how to welcome the prophetic. 
The Bible says that this woman says that I sense that this is a holy man. And she said, what we're going to do, we're going to build this man a prophetic chamber. And it's interesting to know, listen, when you're building, many of you, you're building your ministry, you're building your career, you're building your, your churches, you're building your jobs, but you're not intentional about making space and room for God. Tell your neighbor, you got to make room for God. You can't give God, you listen, you got to make a, a whole room for God. Say, God, every time you want to come and visit me, this is your set place. This place is not empty. I'm, listen, I'm prepared to host your prophetic anointing. Somebody say, I'm prepared. Listen, if God prepares, we got to prepare. We got to prepare to maintain the prophetic grace that God has given us. See, many of us, we want the prophetic anointing, but we don't want to prepare for it. The prophetic anointing and the prophetic grace, and that's the problem why we got a crazy, loose prophetic ministry, is because we're activating crazy cuckoo people. People that do not read. Let me tell you, we are in a we are in a uh, prophetic age. And when I say we're in a prophetic age, what I'm saying to you is this: that there are a lot of prophetic examples from the people that serve Yahweh, but there are also a lot of prophetic people that serve the devil. And we got to understand that just because people can give you accurate information, just because they can read your number and read your mail, doesn't mean that they're authorized by heaven. What this woman says, I sense that this is a holy man. I'm going to prepare a room for him. I'm going to make sure I spend time with him. I'm going to make sure I'm around true prophetic vessels. I'm going to make sure I'm around someone that has some prophetic acumen. I'm going to make sure I'm around someone that has the word word of the Lord in their mouth. Somebody say amen. You got to learn how to make a room. She said, listen, I'm going to, we're going to build him a room. We're going to put a bed in his room. That's the first key. If you're going to make a room for God, you got to understand the matrix of a bed. A bed is a place where you rest. The reason why many of you do not receive prophetic words is because you're always on the go. You're at this church this Sunday. You're at the online church. You listen, you, you're, you're obese in the spirit. You got a word from everybody. You got so much word, you got word burn. You don't know what to do with the word you got. But listen, the woman of God said, if I'm going to maintain this prophetic anointing, I'm going to have to learn the power of rest. See, when I rest, God will give me the rest. Let me tell you, see, when you're on the go, let me tell you, you will miss a lot of information. When you're on the go, you will misappropriate your mandate. When you're on the go, you will not see well. Let me tell you, your body needs rest. So does your spirit, man. Listen, you can't go everywhere and expect to grow in your prophetic gift. Sometimes you got to be silent and sometimes you got to go to sleep. Adam showed us a very powerful tool. Adam, Adam showed us that when I chill out, God can bring out the creativity hmm, that's on the inside of me. See, it took rest for God to bring out the rest in Adam. And many of you want to be creative. You want to be a prophetic uh, uh, entrepreneur. You want to be an innovator. You, listen, you want to be everything under the sun, but you don't want to chill out. When God took out what was in Adam, Adam could see and he said, surely this is my woman. Because rest will change your perspective. Rest will show you your companion. Rest will show you those you're supposed to be in partner with. Somebody say bed. Somebody say bed. Come on, say bed. Bed is, it symbolizes intimacy. It symbolizes rest. So if I desire to grow in the prophetic, it's going to require rest. Now, I'm preaching, but I'm also teaching. The next thing that it's going to require is a table. Somebody shout table. Table is a place of communion. It's a place of, of conversation. This is a place of listening. See, some of you talk too much. You sit around great people and you can't learn because you blabbermouth and you, you're telling them where you've been at and, and how wonderful your ministry is. And the last time you did something wonderful for God, you're spitting out your resume. But last time I checked, God will prepare a table you don't have to. 
the table that's prepared is for you to get instruction table symbolizes communion how do I know that the last supper God says I'm going to sit with you but I'm also going to feed you I'm going to give you more instruction somebody say amen the table symbolizes instruction. The table symbolizes fellowship. The table symbolizes, praise God, the table symbolizes communion. It means I'm not going to rush this moment. This ain't McDonald's. It's not I'm going to get it through drive through It's I'm going to sit down. I'm going to be deliberate. And you and I, God, we're going to have a conversation. Because many of you have been taught by men. You haven't been taught by God. And there are some things that only God should give you. There are some prophetic words that you should only get from God. And men should confirm. Listen, let me tell you, if people are always telling you something new, that's a problem prophetically. Because the same God that talked to them ought to be the same God that talked to you. Now, I'm not telling you that everything should be confirmation. I don't believe that either. But what I'm telling you is this. Everything shouldn't surprise you. There are some things that should confirm in your spirit and some things that God should have told you before you came to church. The table symbolizes communion. The table means that I'm in constant fellowship with God. The table means I'm ready to eat what he put on the table. The table means I'm a person of the word. Come on, somebody. Listen, the chair means I'm going to sit. I'm going to humble myself and sit and listen. I'm not going to be on the road like an itinerant minister and never sit in a church to get fed. I'm going to sit under the word because the word is going to bring me to accountability. The word is going to show me me. I'm going to sit. I'm going to listen at the table. The chair is instruction. The chair symbolizes humility. She said, I'm going to build the prophet's chamber, and we're going to put a chair in there because we know if we put, if we put a chair in there, the man of God is going to receive instructions. Not only will he receive instructions for this nation, but he'll receive instructions for my life. That means I am intentional about sitting down. I can't preach every day out of the month and expect to have something in my reservoir. Let me tell you I cannot go on E and expect to be effective. I have to sit and get instruction. I'm worried that the church is too busy doing everything else. Doing all these services. We've been activated just to come to church. But I'm telling you your prophetic gift is being activated for you to make an impact in the world. You're not called just to, to warm up a pew. You're not called just to come and he can kneel and lay hands on other Christians. You're not called for the prophetic gift to be ignited in you and for you to be going through in your mind to be double-minded. Some days you feel like a nut. Some days you don't feel like a nut. That prophetic gift doesn't come to make you cuckoo. That prophetic gift don't make you come to hide under a bushel. That prophetic gift comes so that you can know there is a light in you. Tell your neighbor, that's what the lampstand represents. The lampstand represents testimony. What is the testimony? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The light represents Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. But we'll never see the light if we don't make room. Rooms are important. Rooms mean that you lodge here. This is a place that you frequent regularly. So these four nuggets will sustain your prophetic ministry. Oh, tell your neighbor, God is going to keep me prophetically. Listen, you're not going to be an overnight wonder. You're not moving prophetically for you to never come back to church. You're not being activated for you to get a social media page. Now, Prophet Wakanda, little Prophet Shushu, or Prophet Juju. You're not being activated to be popular. You've been activated to be impactful. Somebody shout amen. God wants us to make room for him. Because when I make room for God, God makes room. God makes room for me, which brings me back to my next text. And I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to end here because I feel like you're ready to prophesy. But this word going to hold you. Let me give you this prophetic word that when you make room for God, God is going to make room for you. Tell your neighbor, God is making room for me. 
I want to prophesy to you, the Bible says that when she made room for the man of God, the Bible said the man of God says, you know what, what can I do for you because you have went all around the world to accommodate me. Let me tell you, I know we're doing a series on the helps ministry, but let me tell you this, when you serve, God will serve you. Tell your neighbor, you're getting ready to be served. Now, you may not get excited about that because you're lazy. But that's to the people that's been laboring in the spirit. You've been praying as an intercessor. You've been coming. You've been faithful. You've been diligent. You've been, listen, you've been crying at night. You've been praying. Praise God. And it seems as if there haven't been any results. You've been serving on hospitality. You've been serving in the camera ministry. You've been serving in the evangelistic ministry. And God says this is the time for you to get served. God is getting ready to serve you. He's getting ready to blow your socks off. I'm telling you this is the season of the greatest breakthrough and the blessing of your life. Tell your neighbor I'm entering into my blessed season. The Bible says something that's very important to me. This man said what can I do because I feel like I've troubled you. Uh, and what I'm telling you right now is that many of you, you've sacrificed, you've toiled, you've labored for years and years. And I come to prophesy to you that this is not your season of unproductivity. I come to prophesy you just won't be influential, you're going to be prophetic. I come to prophesy to you, you just won't have a business, you're going to have an affluent business. I come to prophesy to you, you won't have, you won't look good, everything's going to be good. Your money is going to be good. Your house is going to be good. Your marriage is going to be good. Your education is going to be good. Your career is going to be good. Your honey is going to be good. Your children is going to be good. Their children are going to be good. Your prayer ministry is going to be good. Your car is going to be good. This is the season where God give you good. Somebody say good, good, good. I come to prophesy God is going to make good on his promises. Many of you, you gave up hope. You stopped believing. You've been living in fear. Many people try to talk you out of what God promised you. But you've made a lamp. You've made a table. You've given God a chair. And now God is getting ready to give you a son. What am I saying? I'm saying to you, your barren season is over. Because you've welcomed the prophetic, God is going to give you your unspoken request. Let me say that again. Because you've welcomed the prophetic, God is getting ready to give you an unspoken request. You ain't told nobody about it. You ain't asked nobody for it. You just had it in your spirit and God is getting ready to answer your prayer. Tell your neighbor, God is getting ready to answer your prayer. God, come on, get your preacher voice on and tell him God is getting ready to answer your prayer. You Listen, where you've sown in tears, the tears you cried was watering your seed. The tears you cried was watering your harvest. And this is the season where God is getting ready to rain on your field. You hear what I said? God is getting ready to rain on your field and every seed you've sown and all the hard work where you've labored. Let me tell you, God is not a man that he should be mocked. Every seed you've sown is getting ready to reproduce in this season and where you've lacked, you're going to be full. Where you've been empty, you're going to be full. Where you've been down, you're getting ready to go up. God is going to bless you right in front of your enemies. God is getting ready to bless your socks off. They laugh, they laugh, they poke fun. But God is getting ready to shock your haters. Tell your neighbors, God is getting ready to shock your haters. I come to prophesy a mind-blowing miracle. I come to prophesy a mind-blowing breakthrough. Many of you said, God, it ain't going to happen. But because you've welcomed the prophetic, I come to prophesy that God is going to do the impossible for you. The impossible is becoming possible because you believe God. Tell your neighbor, I believe God. We're getting ready to activate you. 
We're getting ready to activate you. Don't fret, brothers and sisters. You're getting ready to be activated. But let me tell you, it's no good to be a prophetic success but a private failure. How many of you have seen people who've been wonderful in here but broke when they leave? It's an oxymoron to serve the God of all sufficiency and you broke, busted, and disgusted. This word is coming to tell you you're getting ready to be upgraded. Tell your neighbor I'm getting ready to receive an upgrade. Go ahead and stand up. Stand up. Tell your neighbor you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm on the biggest edge of the biggest breakthrough of my life. Everything around me, everything connected to me is getting ready to go up. When you make room for God, God will make room for you. God is making room for your breakthrough. God is making room for your new house. God is making room for your new child. Your parents' season is over. You've sown and you've sown. And this is your time of breakthrough. This is your season of expansion. This is your season of overflow. This is your season of more than enough. Somebody say yeah. Come on, say yeah. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Even now, we charge this room with the prophetic grace. Even now, we come against every diabolical assignment. We thank you right now that this atmosphere is laced with the prophetic anointing. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Come on, pray. I come against every demonic talk. I come against every work of divination. I speak in Jesus' name. I counsel out every demonic plot. And I say right now, in the name of Jesus, your ears are getting ready to come open. Even online, your ears are opening up. Your eyes are opening up. I decree in Jesus' name that the womb of your spirit is being opened right now. And you're getting ready to prophesy. Somebody shall prophesy. Shall prophesy. In the last days, he promised to pour his spirit out on all flesh. Sons and daughters shout. Sons and daughters shout. Sons and daughters shout. Sons and daughters shout. 